Let's have a look at another four examples. How about this first one? Well, it's an alternating series, so I could apply the alternating series test. Uh, the terms are decreasing because the ends in the bottom get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the terms are decreasing, going to zero, alternating series test says it converges. So this is convergent. But is it convergent because of these alternating terms? Or is it absolutely convergent? Well, if I ignore the negative, I get a 1 over n squared plus 1. 1 over n squared plus 1, that's smaller than the series of 1 over n squared, which is a p-series with p being 2, and I know that converges. So in fact, I get that this absolutely converges. So it's absolutely convergent. So let's fill in the details then. Um, the absolute values of the terms. So we'll let a n be negative 1 to the n over n squared plus 1. The absolute value of those terms is 1 over n squared plus 1. This is smaller than 1 over n squared. These I will call maybe a terms of a series Cn. So the sum of Cn is convergent. That's a p-series with p equal to 2. So by comparison, the sum of the absolute values of the an converges. And so that means the series is absolutely convergent because the series of absolute values converges. So how about the second example? What does it do? Well, it's an alternating series, so I'm going to let bn be 1 over ln of n. Then we have two things that happen. We have that it's decreasing, the values are decreasing in magnitude. bn plus 1 is smaller than bn, that's because the log of n plus 1 is bigger than log of n, so the reciprocal would be smaller than 1 over log n. Two, the limit as n goes to infinity of bn is equal to 0. So by the alternating series test, the sum of negative 1 to the n bn converges. So the series converges. Now, does it converge absolutely? Is it absolutely convergent? We did the alternating series test. This relied on the fact that we did have these terms alternating to conclude convergence. But I want to know the deeper question now. Did, would it converge if the negative signs weren't even there, if they didn't alternate? So is this absolutely convergent? It's a much stronger question. If we get absolute convergence, then we get conditional convergence um, by default. But if we have conditional convergence, we don't necessarily get absolute convergence. And so we want to check, is the series absolutely convergent? Would it converge regardless of the signs being negative? So the, absolute, the series of absolute values is 1 over log of n. We know by the comparison test that this diverges. What's the comparison? Well, 1 over log n is bigger than 1 over n. And the sum of 1 over n, that's the divergent harmonic series, diverges. So by comparison, sum of 1 over ln of n diverges. So the important thing to keep in mind here is I'm not allowed to use the comparison test on the original series because the terms aren't all positive. They're alternating. Comparison test only applies to series where the terms are all positive. So when I look at the corresponding series of absolute values, uh, now all the terms are positive. So I can apply things like the comparison test or the integral test or those other tests. 
And when I do that, I find out that this diverges. So is it absolutely convergent? No, it's not absolutely convergent. So what do we have then? We had that it is conditionally convergent. It converges, it converges, but the seri corresponding series of absolute values does not, so it converged because of the fact it was alternating. So we have conditional convergence there. How about the next one? Well, you might be able to see this pretty quickly, that this is the sum of negative 1 over 3 to the n. So this is geometric, and so it's convergent. And in fact, it's absolutely convergent. It didn't matter that there was a negative sign there or not. It would have converged anyway. So it's absolutely convergent since it's a geometric series with the R value being one-third in magnitude, which is less than one. How about the last one? Number four. The sum of n equals one to infinity n factorial squared over 2n factorial. Convergent or divergent? Well, there's a couple of factorials in this. I'd like to have a way to deal with those. So the first thing I can discount is integral test. I'm not going to be able to use that. There's factorials in here. Um, so I have to use something that's uh, more discrete in nature. What else can I do? Well, I could check to see if the terms go to zero. Uh, this is an n factorial squared, a 2n factorial. Mm, seems kind of likely that the bottom's growing faster than the top, so they probably will go down to zero. What can I do? Well, generally when we've got factorials involved in here, the best test to use is the ratio test, because as soon as you take ratios of consecutive terms, a lot of stuff goes away. So let's do that. Ratio test. So I'm going to look at the the next term over the previous term and take the limit as n goes to infinity and look at the limit of the ratio of consecutive terms. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity of now that's n plus 1 factorial all squared all over 2n plus 1 so that's when I distribute that's 2n plus 2 factorial. Dividing by a n is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So there's the ratio of consecutive terms. I've got an n factorial squared, an n plus 1 factorial squared. I get a lot of cancellations. So let's see exactly the nature of this. The n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. And I'm squaring that, so I can put the squares on each of them individually. 2n factorial is the other one. 2n plus 2 factorial, well, it's 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times the product of all the lower terms, but that's just going to be 2n factorial times the n factorial all squared. Now I can see that this cancels with that, and this cancels with that. And so what I end up with is the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 squared all over 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1. So this is a degree 2 polynomial over a degree 2 polynomial. The limiting value as n goes to infinity is the ratio of their leading coefficients. 1 is the leading coefficient of n squared on top. 4 is the leading coefficient of the bottom. So the limit of ratio consecutive terms is a quarter. That's less than 1. So the series converges by the ratio test. The series converges by the ratio test.